As a landlord, I want to assess cash flowing properties as quickly and as accurately as possible. I've used UI tools like Rentometer and BiggerPockets rental estimates. However, when I want to analyze deals for an entire city, I have to find another way. This is where I use Rentcast to extract rental rates at scale to analyze deals fast. My name is Ariel Herrera, your fellow data scientist with Tech and Real Estate channel, where we bridge the gap between real estate and technology. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to get property records, rental rates, and sales comps all using the Rentcast API. We will take it step by step so that even if you are new to Python, it will not be overwhelming. My mission with this channel, Tech and Real Estate, is to simplify success for you and ideally help you avoid a lot of the mistakes I made in my four year investor journey. And so I want to help you build a data driven business with APIs to improve your processes. And if that's exciting to you, be sure to hit the like button so we can reach more people and be sure to subscribe for new videos every single week. All right, let's get started. In this video, we're going to use the Rentcast API in order to extract property records. Now I'm going to have a series of videos of showing how you could utilize Rentcast API, which you can get started with for free. Now, if you haven't already, sign up for a free API key and you could check out the prior video. It's less than five minutes to set up and you'll have your key. Think of it almost like a password so that you'll be able to access this data. Now, in order to programmatically get information, we're going to use Google Collab. Google Collab is a free notebook environment where we can work with Python without having to install it on our machines at all. This takes away all the extra effort of downloading Python, making sure your environment is correct, and allows you to just get started right away to work with code. This is also a free Google product. So what you're going to do from your end is click the link below for this notebook and go to file and save a copy in your drive. This will allow you to work with the notebook separately so that you can add cells or remove if you'd like. Now, the first step here is we are going to import our variables. And if Python is brand new for you, then I highly suggest to check out my series that I have for introduction to real estate data analytics, where I go through how to go from beginner to hero in Python using real estate examples. So once you have that foundation, we can now leverage these libraries. We're going to use requests in order to extract data from our API pandas to work with the data and see it in rows and columns as a data frame get pass in order to input our api key and make sure that we are obscuring any sensitive information google collab files so that we could download and work with this in a spreadsheet if we'd like and plotly express which is my favorite visualization tool so that we could see what these comps look like down the line in comparison to the subject property so again, the main thing that we want to do here for this video is to utilize the API for property records. So let's go through an example. Let's imagine that we are looking at current listings in Orlando, Florida. Now I am not a current investor in Orlando, Florida. So what would I do if I'm looking to get rental information to assess these properties? Because I don't have the foundational knowledge of knowing right on the top of my head, what rents or what information from the property I can get. So from what we can see, this property is listed at about 275K, three bed, two bath with a price cut recently. Now, what we want to do is take this address and we want to actually pull property records for this information, for this property. And we're going to do so using Google Collab. So now that we've imported the libraries we're going to use, now we're going to input our Rencast API key. So make sure you've copied it from the previous video, enter it in, and now this gets saved down to a variable called Rencast API key. We are going to start off with the first endpoint, which is getting property records. Here you can click on the API docs. This will bring you to Rencast API docs, and we could see we are on property records. The endpoint is API Rencast IO version one properties. 
Now, if you've used Realty Mole in the past, which I've done prior videos on to gather rental data, this is an evolution of Realty Mole. And you could also go down to the bottom of their endpoints to see the migration guide to move over from Realty Mole to Rentcast. But let's assume you're just brand new to using this API. And how do we actually go through these docs? So on the left-hand side, you can look at introduction to look at example use cases of how you would use the API. Our example is we're going to get property records for an individual address. So if we look at our endpoint property records, we could see a quick description, search for property records in a geographical area or by a specific address. Each property record will include data for a specific property, including its structural attributes, features, tax assessment history, and tax amounts. Now towards the bottom, we have query parameters. This is important. This is how we communicate with the API. So if we want to gather data for an address or maybe for the city of Orlando, this is where we're going to input that information. So we have our address and I'm going to remove the default one here and paste our address. We could see that this address gets now strung onto the URL on the right hand side. This is with Python. If you're using a different language, you can also be able to use this API and you can toggle to see what the example code would be. Now, if we wanted to get property records for additional properties, so maybe for the whole city of Orlando, we would put in here Orlando and then we would remove this text. We can also search by zip code, latitude, longitude, and the radius around it property type, which supports single family, townhouse, condo, multifamily. As well, we can get even more data. So right now, the limit for data is between one and 500. So say if we wanted to get data for Orlando and there were a thousand properties that we wanted to get data for, well, we'll be able to get all 1000 properties if we use limit and offset arguments that are down below. So coming back to our original focus is we want to get data just for this address. So what I've done here is enter this address and label the variable address. So we can run this here. Next step is getting the data from Rentcast. So I have the URL endpoint, which should match here. So if we go up and we see this endpoint, this is the same URL. Then for our query string, we're inputting parameters. So in this case, I am inputting the address because that's the only parameter that I care about right now. I just want to get property records for the single address. For our headers, we are inputting our API key, which we are able to establish above here. Then we are requesting the data. So we're telling Rentcast, hey, I want to get property records for this particular address. And here's my API key so that you could validate that I indeed have access to the API. And again, you could use this for free up to the first 50 requests. So I'm going to press play and run this. And we could see that we are met with a response and we have data. We could see our address, state, zip code, and some more information. But it's really not that easy to look at. It's this long string that is hard to kind of digest. So what we're going to do is transform this text object into a JSON object. So we have value and key pairs. This is also reviewed within my free course. Here we could see that we have information on the property. This includes address information, square footage, subdivision, and zoning, which I love to see, bathrooms, lot size, and some more information. We could also see taxes over the last several years. And we could see the property location by latitude and longitude. Now, if we wanted to just see the keys, we could press play here. And it's those same keys that I mentioned where we have the address information, then more property detail, as well as last sale date, last sale price, property taxes, and so on. If you're like me, I always think in rows and columns as my initial experience in my career was as a data analyst. 
so using spreadsheets. We can transform our JSON object into a pandas data frame, which will allow us to work with this in a spreadsheet if we'd like. We can press play here, and we have now transformed this JSON object using pandas. We have one single row, which is our single address. We now have all of our information that we previously structured in the JSON object, now in rows and columns. If you'd like, you can press play and be able to download this data and view it in Excel. Now, of course, you could change the name of the file. Uh, I put that in there just to add some humor, but here you could see all of your columns as well. Now, what if you want to get data, not just for one single address, but for multiple addresses? Can you do that with the Rencast API? And yes, you can. So the way we're going to do this is couple steps. One, we're going to take our previous request that we made, but now we're putting this into a function. Now, if you remember from our free course on Python, is that a function allows us to do the same step on a repeatable basis. So instead of copying and pasting the same exact code and changing a few things, we can put this into a function and only change the parameters. So in this case, only change our address. So there are two addresses that I found uh, that are current property listings, both in Orlando as well. Maybe I was interested in these properties too, and I wanted to get more information on them. So here we have our two addresses in a list. A list holds our objects, which are both strings in this case. I'm going to press play so that we could see the information for our list. And you could see that those two addresses are indeed there. Now, in order to get this information, for properties for both of these two addresses, we will need to do a for loop. So I'm going to first create an empty list. We're going to retrieve data for both of these addresses, and we're going to input each address. So we're iterating through our addresses, and we're going to input each one into our get property records function up here. So we're telling the Rencast API go get me data for this address and then the next address that's in that list. Once we have these addresses or our responses from the Rencast API, we are going to then append this to the list. So our list is going to have multiple JSON objects. So this was a JSON object we had before. It's going to basically stack these objects together. So let's press play up top to run our function and then press play to actually get the data from our function. This took less than a second. We were able to retrieve our two property records. So we could see the total count was two. We were getting data and it, we printed out here the property address. And once our loop, our for loop was completed, we printed that out as well. By using time up top, we can see how long this function took. Now, if you had say a thousand properties, you were running through this, it's going to take a little bit more time. And you may also want to add a one second pause or a couple seconds pause, uh, depending on your plan to running this. So we are now transforming our list of objects or JSON objects into a pandas data frame. And unlike before where we had one single row, we now have two rows for each of those addresses. And we get the same descriptive information that we did previously, which is really neat. And you could also download this to a file as well if you wanted to work with it, say, in Excel. Now for our property records, we just accomplished looking at one single address, getting data for multiple addresses, and I want to hit also getting data for a wider range. So in this case, let's get properties for a zip code. So if we go to our subject property, let's imagine that, you know what, we are interested in this zip code. We've done some research, we know it's a great zip code, it's up and coming, um, and we've seen appreciation through the last five years. But we want to see what other properties are in this zip code. So I'm going to copy the zip code and bring it over here. Let's imagine we want to look at similar types of properties. So three bed, two bath, and let's get a sample set of 250 properties, which we use with limit. 
I will press play, and we are now requesting this data from the Rentcast API. And just as a quick refresher, here you can select the zip code as a parameter, which we're doing. Now we want to see this again in a table structure, so it's easy to interpret. So let's press play here. We are taking our JSON object and we're transforming it into a data frame. We see we have 250 records, which is in line with our request, and there are 65 columns. Those are the same columns that we saw previously since we're hitting the same endpoint. If we wanted to learn a little bit more about these types of properties, we could use Plotly Express, our visualization tool, and we could look at typically for three bed, two baths, when were they built? Let's press play. And it is taking our data frame, DF prop zip, and it's plotting just that one column, which is year built. And we could look at the distribution of when these types of properties were built most of them being between the years 1995 and 1999. We have a good subset as well being a little bit older, so 1950s, as well as being a little bit newer as well. Um, this tells us towards the right-hand side that there hasn't been that much new construction in this space, which may help us with supply. So if there's not that much supply and people want to live at this zip code, we could probably have higher rents, right? Now, what about last sale price? We can press play here, and we can look at a box plot, which gives us the median. And we can see there's pretty fair outliers in this space. I guess there was a property that sold for 26 million. But with Plotly, we can actually dive into this chart a little bit more. And we could see typically the last sale price, and think about it, this could be from decades ago, so it's maybe not the best measurement to use, but we could see last sale price on medium was 153k. Something that I would likely want to do is also pair this with the last sale date, maybe look at the last two years and have a better assessment of how much these properties sell for that are three bed, two bath. So in this video, we've been able to tackle how to get property records with Rentcast API, which is, you could see, super easy to use and you can get started for free. And if you're looking to get property records for an entire city with metrics like cash flow at your fingertips, then check out my company that I've co-founded called Coffee Closers, where we help you find deals in minutes. You can come over for a city and download all property listings and quickly be able to assess what cash flow is for each. You can view information in a spreadsheet as well with formulas if you'd like to make any amendments too. Thanks so much for watching. And if you have any questions or want to utilize this data in another sense, please be sure to join the Tech and Real Estate Facebook group where you can ask not only myself, but peers questions and get answers immediately. All right, see you in the next video.